Hello, hello, dear viewers. Welcome to our channel. It's very good to have you here. In today's video, we will be looking at the internal construction of the starter clutch, or sometimes known as the overrunning clutch. So this is the starter clutch that engages with the flywheel of the engine when engine is cranked. And then all it does is it transmits power when the starter motor is cranking the engine, it transmits power. Power flow will be from the starter motor to the flywheel. Then as soon as the engine is started, power flow will have to be disconnected by the overrunning clutch. So the overrunning clutch is a one-way clutch that disconnects power flow when it comes from the engine side. When flywheel is trying to drive the starter motor pinion, it will disconnect power flow so that it can protect starter motor assembly from getting damaged by the high speed. The armature shaft, here is the overrunning clutch. So this is the overrunning clutch. It will be actuated by the fork. The fork is the one that is engaging and then it will be disengaged when the magnetism inside the starter motor is disconnected, it will be pulled back again. Now our main attention is on this overrunning clutch, sometimes known as the starter clutch. We will be looking at the different parts and then we will be looking at the internal construction of the overrunning clutch. Now, there are times when the starter motor starts spinning and this engages to the flywheel, but there is no power flow. Now, if you happen to have that kind of problem, the main cause is overrunning clutch. So, if the overrunning clutch is somehow faulty, the armature will spin, flywheel will be engaged to the ring gear, this ring gear will be, the pinion gear will be engaged to the flywheel, but there is no power flow. If you happen to have that kind of problem, so the main issue is the starter clutch or the overrunning clutch. So when power is from the starter motor side, for example, when the armature is driving, then it will transmit power to the flywheel. But when the power is changed and the driving is now by the flywheel, when the flywheel tends to drive, when engine is started, flywheel will start to spin at extremely high speed. That time, this overrunning clutch will disconnect power flow. See, this way it is running free, but this way it is transmitting power. We will see in a minute how that is done, but in order to see the construction, let's have a look at the component parts of the overrunning clutch. This is where the fork is assembled. The fork can drive this and engage and disengage to the ring gear. This is assembly for drive flange for the fork. And here we have a clutch spring. We have a spring here. And then this outer part, this outer part is a thin metal, it is called the shell. It's called the shell, and right here in between the shell and the clutch housing, this part is called the clutch housing, between the shell and the clutch housing, there are retainers, roller retainers are there, and finally we have the pinion gear right here. On the inside, we have springs and rollers. We will see in a minute. Now, when there is a problem with the overrunning clutch, people usually tell you that it is not maintainable, but actually you can maintain it. If you want to take this apart, you can pry this open. You can pry this and you can remove the shell. Once the shell is taken out, you can remove the retainers that are right below here and that way you can disassemble the overrunning clutch. Or the best solution if you have a power discontinuity at the overrunning clutch is to immerse this in some kind of solvent and shake it. You immerse it in kerosene, for example, and then you shake it, you immerse it, you shake it, you immerse it. That way you can clean the dirt that is preventing rollers from transmitting power. For example, let me show you how you can take it apart. For example, right here, you can see this overrunning clutch has been already opened. See, already the shell is removed. You can open this shell, gradually tap it, and by removing the shell, you can disassemble the overrunning clutch. Once it is disassembled, when you look at the inside, you will find this. This is an already disassembled overrunning clutch. You can see we have rollers, we have springs, well, there are springs are missing on this one, but we can see that there are rollers. And then 
right here we have the starter clutch housing here we have the housing here we have a screw that will connect to the armature shaft here the armature shaft has a screw and once it is inserted once this is inserted it will assemble here and power will be transmitted from this internal pinion shaft in a race to the rollers from the rollers to the starter clutch housing to the clutch housing then the clutch housing as you can see is connected to the pinion here now when power is coming from this side as you can see when i turn this this way this will push this roller to this direction it will press it hard onto the clutch housing so when it is like this when it is driven like this as you can see the whole assembly moves as a unit when i'm trying to turn it like so this will force this roller this way assisted by the spring it will force the roller to this side and that way power will be transmitted by friction between the roller the inner race and the housing the entire assembly will move as a unit now what will happen when engine is started when engine is started this assembly is running with the flywheel so when engine is started look what is happening see now they are moving separately why is this happening when this is driving when the flywheel is now driving these rollers they will tend to be thrown away they will tend to be thrown against the spring so instead of being forced together when it is moving like this the lower side is moved this way the upper side is moved so the entire roller will jump back so this way it will run free but when when the drive is from this side it will run as a unit so that is how power is transmitted and this is how power is disconnected so the purpose of the overrunning clutch is to disconnect power transmission from this ring gear from this pinion gear to the starter motor armature once the engine is started because of the gear ratio between the starter motor pinion and the engine flywheel once the engine is started rotating it will drive the armature at extremely high speed that will cause mechanical damage on the armature so in order to prevent that power flow has to be disconnected when the engine is started the rollers they tend to jump out they jump against the spring see it jumps back against the spring that way friction will be lost between these three pieces when there is no friction between the three pieces that will disconnect power flow but when there is connection between all the three pieces then power will be transmitted so when the drive is from this side when the inner race is driving when the starter motor is driving this will run push the roller to this side spring is also pushing the roller to this side so the entire assembly will move as a unit when the drive is changed when it is from this side roller will jump this way as you can see roller is jumping now back and then power flow will be disconnected so this is how the starter motor clutch operates let me take this out and uh, you can have a look let me remove this Well, some of the springs are missing in here because I have used the spring to repair another starter motor with a missing spring. So this is how it is. You can have a look at the spring if you want. Let me take it out. So this is the spring. This is the spring. And as you can see, the housing, there is a wide area and there is a narrow area roller will be placed on the wider area roller will be placed on the wider area here such a fashion and then the spring will be inserted such a manner
So this is how it is constructed. This screw is connected to the starter motor armature. As you can see the starter motor has armature screw. There are screw trees, so it will be connected that way. And then this roller collar will be the one riding right in here. Well, the springs are missing here. Two springs are missing because I have replaced those springs for another starter motor. Anyways, this is how it is assembled. The ease assembly, you can spin it a little. So it will be inserted in such a fashion. Now trouble happens when there is dirt accumulated between this collar and the rollers. When there is dust, dirt accumulation right in here, if these cavities are filled with dirt and dust, the roller will no longer be touching both surfaces. In order to transmit power, this roller has to have a clear contact between the clutch housing and the inner race. Now, if there are dirt accumulation preventing this roller from traveling to the full length, that will disconnect power flow because the roller will be thrown out into the wider area. If the rollers are placed in the wider area, then power flow will be interrupted. But if it is pressed hard to that area, and when there is contact between these three surfaces, then we will have power flow. So if it gets dirty, you can start cleaning. You can immerse this in some sort of solvent. You immerse it and then you clean it, you shake it, you immerse again, you shake it, vibe, shake it, and uh, you can clean it in such a fashion. But if that still doesn't fix, you can pry it open and you can also repair it internally. That is what we did to the starter motor pinion gear very recently. We happened to find that two of the springs are broken, so we bought this a new one and uh, replaced the springs from here to that. Now let's have a look at how it actually operates. Let's take this to a flywheel, engage it, and see how power flow is continuous and how power flow is interrupted when it is running. Now let's, let's have a look at it in action. Now this is the one that is connected to the armature shaft coming from the starter motor. So it will be driving the flywheel. Let's say this is a flywheel. This is actually constructed for another purpose. Let's say this is an engine flywheel. So the ring gear will engage to the pinion gear right here. So when the starter motor is driving, this is how it is connected. Now what will happen by that time is when this is rotating, look. When this is rotating, it will be driving the flywheel in such a manner. So, power will be transmitted from this piece to the rollers, from the rollers to the outer part. The outer housing is actually connected to the ring, the pinion gear. So, power flow will be in such a manner. Let's see what is happening when engine is started. Let me hold this straight. See, this is what happens. When engine is started, see, when engine is started and the flywheel is running at extremely high speed, the pinion will start revolving with the flywheel at extremely high speed. But as you can see, there is no power flow transmitted to the armature shaft. So this is how the overrunning clutch or the starter clutch disconnects power flow. Well, dear viewers, that is all we have for you in this presentation. I hope you have enjoyed and understood some of the basic operating principles of the overrunning clutch and some of the troubles associated with. The main trouble is dirt accumulation. Excessive dirt accumulation can cause damage. And if that is the case, there will be no power flow from the starter motor to the engine flywheel. And uh, you can see, you can hear the starter motor spinning, but the engine will not spin. If that is the case, so most probably you have a bad starter motor clutch, or sometimes known as overrunning clutch, and that needs immediate attention. Well, if you like this video, please smash the like button. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notification if you happen to like it and uh, share it with friends. 
so that they can also benefit from what is presented in this video. I'll see you in another video. Till then, stay safe.